Hey all, this is Rolo coming at you from Gen 10 Den, where we look at things from a Gen X point of view. Today we're going to be looking at communication and how it's evolved since we were Gen X kiddos. With me today is co-host Shirk, the Iron Shirk at Twitter, and Amanda Hug and Kiss at Kathy Love Girl 77 How you doing, Shirk? I'm doing fantastic. I'm really psyched to relive my uh, MSN Messenger days. Wow, blast from the past. I love it, Messenger. Messenger, uh, Messenger pardon me for the slur. Uh, Amanda, hug and kiss. How you doing? How are you feeling? Awesome. I hope we get to talk about how I folded notes to pass them Ooh, at school. Uh, on, on that note, I once was given a note, and then she got mad because I started playing paper football with it. Oh. Oh. You're, you've been a heartbreaker your whole life, eh? Right. I, <laughs> I told her, don't fall in love with me. You'll only embarrass yourself. <laughs> um, so when uh, I was a kid, when we were kids back uh, in the 80s, I met, and I would imagine both of you are the same way, met your friends at school, or what about neighbors? Amanda? Uh well, so that was the same thing. Um, you only lived by people you went to school with here within like, a, you know, a mile radius, maybe. We all went to the same school. So that's how you met your friends. You went to school with them. You're around the same age. That's how it worked. You didn't meet any by mail? Never. <laughs> Just checking. What about you, yeah. Shirk? How, how did uh, people meet friends in Canada? <laughs> uh, it's it's similar experience to uh, America, uh, where we met people that lived around our neighborhood. Although I lived out in the country, so it was more of like whoever was within bike riding distance. Those were my buddies, and then yeah, uh, school. Same same as most people, I think. Yeah, uh, same here. Uh, what about neighbors? Didn't look out. Didn't look out on neighbors. I I sure didn't. I didn't look out on neighbors. Oh, I yeah. The I uh, played with GI Joes with the kid that lived across the street. Uh, my other neighbor, uh, he beat the shit out of me because he was a few years older than me. Uh, <laughs> there was one of let's see, yeah, those were like my closest neighbors. But there was a few others, maybe like down a short bike ride away. But yeah, actually, I did have good neighbors uh, in my late. My preteen era and up, yeah, that good neighbors. I lied. What about you, Amanda? So I had three boys around this my age, within like a year younger than me to three years older than me, three brothers um, that lived directly across the street. So from the time I can remember acknowledging them, maybe five, six years old to, until high school, I hated them. They were like <laughs> the boys across the street. They were yeah. jerks, you know, they were loud. They built skateboard ramps that they jumped off into my yard. I hated them. Then in high school, I was like, eh, one of them's kind of cute. You're like, ah, you know, and like they started to kind of become my friends slowly. Uh, I had a best friend who lived six houses up and she had a brother that was their age. So we eventually all became a huge group posse. after you know a couple posse years into high school yeah. a posse yeah. where you were from did you have to get jumped into the gang or how did, how did that work well so uh, yeah i mean i kind of i kind of hung out on the outside i feel like because i couldn't hang out with those guys because they were like the guys i hated my whole life <laughs> i hung out with the girl up the street her brother was friends with them. So we kind of like did our kind of hangout thing. But uh, once, you know, high school started, I started hanging out with the high school people a little bit more. Well, so, Shirk, similar to you, when uh, I was a kid in the 80s, yeah. uh, we would ride our bikes and then like, hey, let's go to let's go to Mike's house. Let's see if Mike's home. Mm -hmm. Like we wouldn't think about even using the phone we would just like ride our bikes there and, and see if mike was home or jeff or rj all of our buddies we would be like hey 
uh, check it out. We didn't like have internet or anything like that. We just went out and uh, checked it out. What about you? Our what first was- phone, our, as I recall, our first phone was actually, uh, you know, the classic dial, uh, dial phone or whatever but i think we had one of those party lines did you guys ever have one of those where no. like a Which bunch of your mean? neighbors yep. like people that live around you are all on the same line so like no way yeah, oh, not, not, I, not in like, that yeah it's kind of fucked up but uh i i remember because like you wouldn't even be sure if the phone call was like for you or for your neighbor it was, it was a very strange situation <laughs> which uh Oh, it was a town phone. I forgot. We, uh, that's how they do up in the country. <laughs> yeah, that had to be a Canada thing. Yeah. yeah. Could be. I don't know. But we, that's what we had. That's my first memory of, like, our phone was, like, yeah, we had a common phone with our neighbors. Did you have a rotary phone? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I miss those. <clears throat> what about you, Amanda? Did you have a rotary phone? So I don't remember the one at my house, but... I had, uh, my grandparents lived across the street and they had one up until like 10 years ago when they died. Like, I mean, like, and, um, but, and I'm sure we had one, but I don't necessarily remember that one, but I definitely have never shared a phone line with my neighbors (laughs) for sure. Uh, So I had a rotary phone and then we switched to a button phone. And then we had the Canadian phone. And I call it a Canadian phone because it was a wireless phone. Um, but sometimes it would tap into the neighbor's phone call. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. Canada. <laughs> In Canada, we call it a rotary phone, not a rotary phone. Just Yeah, that's, oh, a, that, that's a Rolo thing because we call it rotary phone too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that could possibly be it. When you speak multiple languages like me, English, Spanish, Italian, Klingon, things start to like get together and mix. I kind of don't get things right. Um, that said, uh, how was your practice with that? Like, did you just call your friends? Did your mom make you call your family? Did your were you allowed to have boys call you? What about girls? Okay, so I feel like there's a big difference between pre-middle school and then middle school, or we called it junior high here. So pre-junior high, it was like one phone number, one phone line. You had to call, be like, can I talk to my friend? Parents would usually say no or make it quick, whatever. Then junior high came and there was this push to get the kids their own phone line. Cause it wasn't going to bother the parents anymore. So <laughs> the cool kids got their own phone line. And I specifically remember like my parents getting divorced and my mom being like, if your dad starts paying child support, I'll get you your own phone line. <laughs> so I had my own phone line for two years and I thought I was so cool, but it still didn't have like call waiting. I didn't get like the cool stuff, like call waiting or anything like that. So you could talk to your friends, but you know, it was like, had to be a planned out thing. I didn't have like an answer machine or caller ID. Were you allowed to talk to boys? Um, I feel like I probably lied about it. By the way, I ended up by hand me down because one of my friends got two, two of the same gifts for her birthday. She gave me the clear phone that everything inside was neon colored. Oh my God, I remember those. (laughs) Do you remember that? Oh, Oh, it was so cool. Painted my name with nail polish on the outside of it. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, that was cool. (laughs) What about you, Shirk? I mean, uh, I didn't have a girlfriend until I was in like grade 11, so I didn't have to worry about any girls calling me because I was like, not wanted by anyone so it was it was fine (laughs) yeah Yeah. no Um, bigs no bigs i didn't have girls call me until (laughs) until uh the end of high school and all they ever wanted uh well all they ever called for is when they wanted things which is a trend that still exists actually that's it It started then hasn't hasn't ended (laughs) 
that's it. That's how just about that works. Um, yeah, when when I used the phone, eventually, you know, we were past that. We just ride our bikes with our friends. We were trying to ride the bus everywhere. Then eventually, our friends started. Some of our friends started driving, so we would use the phone and be like, "Yo, Mako, one of my buddies, Mako, where are we going tonight?" You know, and then we would like go pick up our friends and in a car. Um, he had a Conquest, was the name of that vehicle, um, and uh, that's how we would use the phone for. We'd be like, "Hey, who we, who would uh, want to hang out with and see if they're home?" And then we pick them up, but we didn't really like chat on the phone and talk about like how our day went, what cartoons you'd watch or <laughs> not really. <laughs> no. not, yeah. Yeah. Not, we did that in person though. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that wasn't mature or anything, um, but yeah, in we person, would, we, we would just be arranging our uh, dungeons and dragons games. That's pretty much all we would. Yeah, be absolutely. So I don't know if it's because I'm a girl or if it's because of just how my life was a little bit different. I don't remember what it was called when you could add somebody to your call. Do you remember oh, that? Uh, yeah. Three. Way. Three, three way calling. It was called three way calling. Everyone okay, knows so three way. Everybody, yeah, yeah. Three way calling. So I specifically remember my eighth grade year, like the cool thing to do was you'd call your friend. So I'd be on the phone with my friend and we would both three-way call somebody at the same time. So now they could both hear and talk to each other, but we would just stay quiet. So we would call two people that hated each other or a girl and guy, a girl that had a crush on a guy. And we would just listen like, oh, this is horrible and uncomfortable. But it was like our Friday it. night pastime. I'm not gonna lie though, like when when one of the boys had a girlfriend or whatever, he'd be like, "Hey, I'm gonna go call my girl, and put her on speakerphone so you could hear." Mm -hmm. <laughs> he'd like, just don't say yeah. shit. Just don't say shit. And then right. they would call, and then and then my boy would like my boy Danny would go, "Hey, I'm gonna put you on speaker," and she'd be like, "Is anybody there?" No, no, nobody's here. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know yeah. what I remember is uh, one of the coolest things. Um, was getting a cassette of prank phone calls and cause this is before call waiting. So like people, people had no idea what was happening and like, this was like cutting edge shit. And uh, like, you just can't do that stuff like to that degree. Like the now no, 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 no. Man, back in the day, those were the best. You had, right. Yeah. We were almost like bootlegs, like bootleg cassettes we would have with prank phone calls. Yeah. So there was, um, there was two radio hosts. I can't remember their names but they did a, a weekly show about like that boys or whatever uh yes they for sure did it but was it uh, for one. sure the jerky boys did it yeah but there was also yeah yeah, yeah there we were could, other ones mm -hmm. yeah. like i remember the og uh, og prank phone call like where for you, sure you know, your buddy in school would be hey man check this out and you'd like yeah grab a copy of it oh those were the best I love mm -hmm. these. sometimes there was a radio station up here um that would just play like a snippet of like jerky boys or some sort of prank call. And that was one I remember where this guy uh, in Alabama uh, pretended to be a principal and called um, a mother and said his son was in trouble, right? Or whatever. So he calls and he goes, um, uh, ma'am, yes, I'm calling from such and such high school. I'm principal, whatever his name is. I'm calling to let you know that your son, he is, he's, and then he goes, Oh no, what, what happened? Your son, he's, he's a homo sapien. Oh no, <laughs> no, I can't. I raised him right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. But those were gold. It was on the radio. Yeah. It's oh, like, for sure. Yeah. Those were the best. Rick D. I want to say Rick D's. Rick he D's. Was, he was like the top 40 guy. Yeah, so he he had a record you could buy. Really? And it had some prank calls on it. Yeah. It's like here's some Whitney Houston and here's some uh prank phone calls. Yes. Side yes. <laughs> yeah. My local guy was Rick Chase, was our local guy. Yeah. Um we had a station called KML and uh he was rather known uh in this area and he would from time to time play some stuff like that. Um 
Nice. It's funny that you mentioned cassette tapes because that thing, people used to record songs off the radio and yeah. then make their own mixtape. Oh, yeah. With it. And then you would give it to people and you kind of just like would talk about it, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, dude, did you check out such and such as mixtape? Mixtape. I don't know if you guys did that, but we did that all the time. Oh, yeah. All the time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That's the best. Those were yeah, I'd make yeah, mixtapes for, for, mix for my imaginary girlfriends. It was awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, today, what do you do? You like, you can send somebody your Spotify playlist, but that's not going to get heard. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. That would, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and try explaining this stuff to kids now. They're just like, what? Like <laughs> no. e even explaining payphones, which was also such a big thing. Like pay, like you know, you always had a, a quarter and a dime in your pocket because if you were out and about, like you had to be able to call your parents, and unless you wanted to call collect and be like, "Pick me up right here" or whatever, you know, when they said what's your name, you always had a quarter and a dime in your pocket. I guess it was a quarter for a long time, and then it was a quarter and a dime. And kids just don't understand the concept of that anymore at all. I saw a payphone last year somewhere, and I picked it up just to see, and then it didn't even work. Oh. <laughs> um, that said, we used to rock something called pagers. And what that is, is you would have a phone number to this little device that you would carry around, and then it would beep. And then it For would sure. show your phone number of, of the person you're trying to reach. They're asking you to call them, and you would know who that number is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so me being a person who was not a drug dealer, so I did not have a pager <laughs> at any point in my life. No. Really? You had to Never. have a pager. <laughs> Never. No, I, w I wasn't cool enough for a pager. Come on. When that was, might like, have been a Canada thing. And Everybody like, had a pager. What year were pagers like actually a thing? 95. 95? Oh, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, huge. I mean, they, were you can, uh, they were before that. I would say 90 to 95 was the biggest time. And um, they became smaller. And, you know, there was designs. You get the clear one. You could get the, you know, you wanted to see the insides for some reason. Nobody cares about that anymore. I have and, great um, ones. You what? I, I yeah, ones. I did. I liked them. I liked them a lot. Um, I would wear them as a necklace sometimes. <laughs> it's like your bling. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It was I it. pretty bling before it was a thing. Uh, Motorola, of course. I don't think there was any other brands. I agree. Um, and and there was pager stores. There wasn't cell phone stores yet. There was pay you went to the pager store and you got your pager. I think it was like 25 bucks a month or something like that. But here's the worst thing about pagers like you could page somebody but they didn't have to call you back, you know? Yeah. yeah and so you, you know, you're just original, kind of at their mercy of the original leaving you on red. <laughs> yes. And it was brutal sometimes. No, you'd be not like, yet. oh. Yeah. You wouldn't hear him from them forever or, or, right. or yeah. And, right. and then we became clever with the messages. You know, you could type, you could, a certain numbers meant something. So you didn't actually have to call. It was kind of like the early on text messages. They called it pager talk. Pager talk. Yeah. Now that's, I go. bet you, that's you haven't heard in a long time. Pager talk. That should be like, yeah. you could do a side podcast, just pager talk. No, you could. Yeah. So, do so I what you, you could do is you put in your phone number because you know you call the pager number and it's like put in your pay your phone number you want them to call you at. Oh, did she just freeze? Is she frozen on yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's gone. So we're gonna have to. Oh, you guys I mean, are frozen too. Oh no, you're you back? are back now. Okay, so you would put what on the phone. So you, so when you called the, their pager number, it would say, put in your phone number. So you put in your phone number and then you press the star button and then 911. And that meant like, call me now. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. yeah Remember sure. that? Yeah. Yeah. 9 I would, I would return those though. I would, yeah, yeah. I would talk to those. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, I would send my brother 
816-80085. Which would be boobs. big boobs. Big boobs. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. Like just for just for kicks. Just for kicks. I hated Patriot Talk Duck. Whenever I got it, I was like, what does this mean? Uh, it's not important. <laughs> yeah. But it was cool. I actually mentioned it in one of my videos before where like we would just hang out and we'd be so involved with hanging our friends that sometimes we would just ignore our pagers because we were just having fun. You were, we were so cool. Be, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Public phones, though. How gross were your public flo uh, phones in your area? Because mine were pretty bad. <clears throat> so my high school had two, one on each end of the campus. Everybody knew the phone number to it. Because do you remember you could call the public oh, phone also? Call. Yeah, you could call, yeah. Yeah. So if you knew your friend was at lunch at that time, you called and you're like, go find my friend. I need to tell her to ditch six period, you know? And they're like, oh, I'm eating. They'd hang up on you. You had to call back. Those phones were, they were bad news. They were. <laughs> yeah, they were bad news. I remember... When they were, yeah, a quarter. I always had quarters. Um, sometimes I would just put 50 cents. Like, I didn't want to bother <laughs> with dimes. Because it would fall out of your pocket. Yeah. So, and that was a big baller, shot caller. <laughs> and uh, what's another quarter to me for a guy like me, you know? Just yeah. <laughs> oh, and actually, now that you say that, remember, you could only talk for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Yeah, and then you had to put more in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. So you put two quarters in, you could talk as long as you wanted. Um, one of my friends, I remember, like I had to talk on the phone, a pay phone, and then she was waiting to use the phone. And I told her it wouldn't be that long. And then I don't remember whomever I was speaking with, but she wanted to keep on talking. So I put in another quarter, and then my friend... Uh, who was waiting for the phone got so pissed she slapped me like in front of everybody <laughs> and, like everybody just turned around like Whoa. wow you know it, it was a big deal to some people big um, deal yeah yeah it was um i can't believe you didn't have a pager shark never man i okay, wasn't so i wasn't cool enough for that come on no chance <laughs> I was like one of the last people to get a cell phone. I mean, you wouldn't know it. I fucking can't keep away from that thing now. But in the beginning, I was like one of the last people. One of my best friends had to actually like pretty much nag the shit out of me for me to get one. I just didn't couldn't be bothered. So Okay, so I didn't evolve into the cell phone right away because I loved the freedom that pagers gave me <laughs> man huh? you're like the i did president I of, of the pager lobbying association here right <laughs> yeah i think we should bring him back actually um no like you know you know how it would be if like you didn't want to talk to somebody at that moment you'd be like oh, i couldn't find a phone yep <laughs> yeah that's it i mean it what 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 is he gonna say was i being mean though but you know that's just you know sometimes you just want to do other stuff or need to do other stuff and you just you know like you can't really be on the phone and yeah you know i don't know today it, eh, it even tells you if like somebody sees the message right not always no that's key you got to know which ones do and which ones don't that's why like <laughs> on, on whatsapp if you don't want them to know you can swipe it down from the top so you can read like a preview of it without actually uh dirty yeah, you got to know those tricks though. It's 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 very important in, in uh, this day and age. <laughs> oh man, look at you guys! All right, so my first phone was, mm, it was either yeah, it was a Nokia thirty three ten. You know the model? Jesus, Dude, every, everybody knows the model. Like you know, it's no, it's, chance. it's no chance. Okay, the Nokia thirty three ten was. That big brick blue phone that weighed a ton. A big one. Oh, you had yeah, a big one like, first. It's like oh, wow. it's like the size of a like the size of a beer can, maybe. <laughs> it was a yeah, no, well, it wasn't that big, but it was big. 
I think every okay. I'm gonna put a picture of it up somewhere, and um, you guys can actually go discuss something right now while I look it up, and then I'll, I'll present it to you real quick. Well, so Amanda, when did you get your first cell phone? Uh, I got my first cell phone when I was 20. So I already had a child. Okay. And um, cell phones came out. And this is this is how crazy it was. I shared it with two other people. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Like who, my, did you, who did you share it with? I shared it with my roommates. Really? Yeah. Um, and we didn't, we didn't take it out of the house. Like, so it was, it was almost like a house phone. Yeah, it was kind of like, but every once in a while we'd be like, oh, can I take the phone? I'm going to do this, 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 whatever. Really? Wow. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. So was this like, were you in college? No. No, I, I, no, I did the college thing a little bit later, but, um, you know, I was just like new was mom. Yeah. yeah. Moved in with a couple girls who were also like, didn't work out with their baby daddies. And we, yeah. you know, it was a short, it was short lived, but I just remember that we shared it until got I got my own split. phone. How did you work out the billing? Did you split the bill equally? Did you take turns paying it? What was the arrangement there? Yeah, that's funny. So um, it was someone's, someone's job to pay that bill. Someone else's job to pay the landline, someone else's job to pay like one of the utilities. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you each had your own. That makes sense. But it was not, it was very short lived because we didn't do that for very long. And then when we ended, up, then when we lived on our own, I went a little while without a cell phone until it became like one of those things that everybody needed a cell phone. Yeah. Oh, I had that phone. I had that phone. There you go. I that's never, a, yep. that's the kid thirty three ten. Everybody knows this phone. Like everybody I, had that phone. I never had it. <laughs> oh, I did. No. I had a flip phone first, so. I, oh, I don't I don't think I, I think, related to them. Yeah, I want to say it was like maybe 2003 something like that. I was like Oh yeah, you were way late in the game. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah, you skipped this this era. Um Oh yeah. Okay, let me remove that. Um So that was my first phone. It if I remember right, it actually had SMS, but nobody used it. I mean, cuz it was garbage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was said numbers, but nobody using it. it. Was yeah, everything was just about talking on the phone. Um, that was my first phone. Um, was that your first phone too, Amanda? Because you had one. Yeah, I want to say that was our first phone. Okay. Yeah. Um, my next phone was a flip phone. So this is probably when Shirk. Yeah. Had one. Mine was a Motorola flip phone. I don't remember Even what yours? Was, but I don't remember what brand mine was. I just know it was a flip phone. Wait, I want to add okay. something to that really quick. So prior to that blue phone and sharing the phone with my roommates, I had a job working at the college district where um, once a month we'd had board meetings. And the day prior to the board meeting, I had to go deliver the agenda to all the board members around the, the city. And I had to take a phone with me that was in a suitcase. Oh, wow. So, and I never used it because they were like, okay, so this is for emergencies. You're holding documents that are super important. But if you have to use this phone, it's going to cost us $10 million. So only use it if you have to, you know, whatever the price was. It was crazy. So, yeah, okay. I carried the little suitcase phone for a minute. Oh, yeah, there was that phone. Yeah, it's something like that. Okay. Yeah, this was, this was very... Familiar to many, uh, many people. Everybody had it. Yeah. Um, my carrier was, I bet you haven't heard this name in a long time, Singular Wireless. For sure. Yep, yeah, I had Singular Wireless also. You guys have oh, all different heard. carriers that we do, so I'm not going to know oh, any yeah, of those. Right. But I had, my first one was Fido. So. Oh, I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, because it's Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. So the coolest thing about that phone... The coolest thing about that phone, <laughs> which today is so funny to me, is that you could you could buy songs off of Walmart for whatever reason through that phone to play music on that phone. 
that that specific phone you just popped up and in yes you could you could buy songs and they were like a couple dollars or whatever or you could just hear a snippet of the song to see if it's a song you wanted and when you listen to that snippet you could download it become your ringtone <laughs> yeah that's what i remember i remember the right ringtone. yes yeah, through walmart.com or whatever it was yeah, so I had like 3,000 songs that were saved on that little phone. Not 3,000, probably 30, but they were ringtones. And it was like, and I remember I had that, uh, there was like an 80s song that I'll never forget from that phone. What song? It was Take, take, take On Me. Oh, yeah. Because you know how that song starts, right? You know how that song starts? Yes. So that's when I see that phone, I hear that song and I'm like, oh, man. That was amazing. I, I still have a, I don't, I guess I put sound effects as my phone in a way. Like I, I have opera as my phone, my ringtone. Awesome. You, you, you still have like an actual audible ringtone. Are you a crazy person? <laughs> Who does like, that? Why would you, why would, why would you not? What? I do too. No, I do really? too. Really? <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Know. I've been, I've, like unless I'm like around the house and I'm like expecting a phone call, I will never have sound coming out of my phone. I don't either, but I still downloaded it. Like I have the Harry Potter song. <laughs> what? Yeah, crazy. I do. Like, you. Yep. Love it. <laughs> like, why wouldn't you want to hear that? I don't get is that, it. Who is that? Andrea Bocelli? Um, Godfather? One of the guys that died. The big Pavarotti? Uh, yeah, Pavarotti. Pavarotti. Yeah. There you go. He was the easy one. But I yeah. Think. But I used to, you know, back, back in the day, used to have all those, all those other songs on there. Like, I loved having um, Whoop, There It Is and <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Drop it like it was hot. Drop it like it's hot oh. was the best. Oh no no yeah everybody had that one yeah everyone had that one. Not everybody. Yeah. Well, well Canadians weren't as cool as us clearly. Sure, that's true. Yeah. 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 But you, some of your friends had Bon Jovi. Mm. Yeah. That's not a thing these days. I guess I never even think about it. Like I thought everybody had. Custom ringtones. Yeah, so, yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah. I think everyone yeah, I, through, I think everyone went through a ringtone phase. And some people sure. were more more committed than others, but mm -hmm. like everyone did it at some point for sure. Yeah. And so, and assigned them to every person. <laughs> all of that. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. And you can um, like troll people by giving them like a ringtone that kind of like disses them a little bit. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's the good stuff. Yeah, my brother has a, a song from a movie, Coming to America. I don't know if you've seen that. Um, Eddie Murphy, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, brother's, my brother's ringtone song for me is Soul Glow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So, sometimes he'll just like, I can tell he's just listening to it because he doesn't yeah. want to answer. He just likes, he just likes hearing the, uh, the music. So he'll let it ring for a long time. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so we're at the Motorola V180 flip phone. Till since, since then, texting wasn't a thing. No, you could, you could send numbers, but nobody used it. Nobody I don't know, man. Right. I feel like my my first phone I could text on because honestly, my buddy Jay was the one that convinced me to get it, and like we he wanted to be able to text me, so that's like literally why I got a phone, my first one. So I'm sure that I could, but again, yeah. I was, I was yeah, late. You so, yeah, you push the button a million times to yeah, it's pain in the like, ass. Sure. Yeah, 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 no, yeah. So, yeah, I never got one, and like nobody in their right mind would bother pressing the button that many times to try to send a message that way. But it, it did exist. We did it. No, we oh, did it. I, I we did, did it all, it. all night. Said, yeah, I'm also not in my right mind. So, yeah, um, so so now we're talking about. In the mid '90s, and the um, internet started to become a thing. AOL You've got mail. started popping up, and the infamous AOL Messenger. 
for sure. Tell me you guys had AOL Messenger. No, never. I did MSN, but I never did AOL. So what? You guys never. Did. You got mail, huh? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I didn't. I know. I'm glad to hear about it, though. Take it away. What was your handle? Um. So I feel like I got pretty into that one, and my like my handle was like Sam's mom or something silly like that. But I also remember at the same time was when the Blackberry came out. Oh like my God. when I got into that. So it was like, what? I have a whole keyboard. You know, I walked around with that like square Blackberry that had the whole keyboard. That was the coolest thing ever. It was like, all you got to do is sit down and text. But if other people didn't have it, they didn't want to text you like you wanted to text them, you know? Yeah, no, that was a tech, tech, techies uh, wet dream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but AOL it was definitely, that's when everybody started like, oh, there's other people out there in the world. Yeah. What was your handle, Shirk, on MSN Messenger? Um. I don't remember, but it, it, I would say it's very likely it was like Shirk the Jerk or something, but I don't remember exactly what it was. But yeah, MSN Messenger rocked. Like I loved, like I would spend my whole night, you know, after work or whatever. Yeah, it was dope. Sitting on the, in the chats. Yeah, it was, it was great. Mine, I don't know if we ever met, but mine was Wet Wet 69. Did we ever meet? Oh, probably. Yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah, I used to. I used to be on there quite a bit. I loved it, dude. I, I, I really because until not until then did you really communicate with people outside of your circle, right? No, it yeah, was like, that was a, a way to introduce you to just like people from all over the world and from different uh, areas that you'd never connected with otherwise. So it was like everything changed then. Yeah, um, and, and that was before people, like Facebook. So yeah. Yeah, you just meet it, and then like hella people were trying to pretend they were girls. <laughs> like, look at this. They're all trying to pretend they were girls. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. I caught my husband cheating that way. Really? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I, pretended to, I pretended to be another girl. Did you? Yeah. yeah. He had a job that he sat in an office for a minute, and he was always on that. And I was like, who do you talk to on there? He's like, oh, just my friends, you know? And I was like, Let's see. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, you know, you couldn't send pictures. There was no, like, verification process at that time. You just had to go with, like, I hope that's who they are. The Wild yeah. West. That's what it was. The Wild West. Yeah. Yeah. The, the 90s yep. were the Wild, Wild West. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you had yeah. all, the, like, Napster fucking ruled. And like oh, all yeah. those sites ruled like I'm like, wire when Napster before no when Napster was like really before they got shut down, it was like the greatest site in the world. I don't care. No, yeah, I agree. Agree. It was awesome. I agree. I agree. It was dude, you could be on there for hours on end because for the first time we had access to all this music. Yeah, all you, of it. you could get anything, like anything you wanted, it was there. Yeah. Dude, I remember like our friends would gather around like the computer and we'd be like, get this song. And then like we couldn't wait. I'm like, damn, it's taking forever to download. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. man. Dude. Uh those were the days though, dude. Like and like hard drives weren't big. Like no. they were now. No, and no. also with music came porn, right? At that time. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yep, that's right. I mean, because I could because I remember seeing like, you know, like people at work getting in trouble for that because we had just gotten the internet and we were supposed to be using it to like communicate with each other at work and they would teach us how. And then all of a sudden someone would get in trouble because they had like porn and we were like, what? What do you mean? How are you finding that? Oh, just like the same way you get music. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Oh man, vintage porn now, of course. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember in, when I went to uh, college, um, they had something called a zip drive. I don't know if you guys ever seen what those were, 
But, we still have those. Okay. So we were doing a project and uh, one of the people in our table uh, had to uh, had to do his project. So he brought up his zip drive and he put it in and he select tried to select the file, but he didn't see that his zip drive was on the screen you know like everybody could see it and <laughs> yeah <laughs> we had so much porn on there just like <laughs> and the whole class like dude they were they were like stunned it wasn't like today where when they just laugh it off it was kind of like a stunner like what the is this happening is this real you know like it wasn't that common yet so yeah it chipped out and no yeah he obviously didn't present and didn't finish the course <laughs> but actually yeah. the team didn't even know what to do because that just this not ha didn't happen till then you know i'm sure people brought playboys to school at some point but i mean this was college dude it wasn't like you were in junior high school, you know, and you were just sent to the principal's office. So she didn't like, didn't know what to do. She just like asked him to leave the class. And then like, he just never came back. I don't know about Playboys. I feel like you're more of a penthouse letters kind of guy. Oh. I did. I'm not even joke. I did. I no. <laughs> penthouse was way better. Like I used to love reading it. I did. I really did used to love reading it for the articles. <laughs> No, I did. It had the best stories, man. It had really the best stories. Um, I would rip out the pictures and then I would give it to my friend. And then, like, he would let me borrow all his video games and shit. And, like, all his other stuff like that, like, in exchange. Because, like, I wouldn't care, you know. I just, I just, yeah, I did, you know, I didn't. It didn't, it didn't, like, see, I was an artist. And so, like, nudity is part of a thing when you're, not, when you're like, draw and do art. Like, nudity is just. It's just there, like you're used to it, but one of the perks of the job. <laughs> yeah, you know. So I didn't like I, I I do live nudes all the time. Um, I remember one of my uh, classmates. Um, we were doing live nudes, and it was his first time, and he must have been 18. You know, mm -hmm. he probably never seen a nude woman in uh, in his life. And a pretty one at that. And like he was standing up on an easel and oh, he didn't have a seat. It. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> was he wearing sweatpants? Yes. <laughs> he was wearing sweatpants. <laughs> oh, the boy never stood a chance. <laughs> no, no, no. But I always knew he was a stand up kind of guy, you know? <laughs> uh huh. Oh man. oh man, poor dude, poor dude. Like he was, like he was genuinely embarrassed, though. He he was. He didn't. I mean, that was his way of communicating, really. Yeah, yeah. His true feeling. Um, used to call <laughs> boner talk. Yeah. Boner talk. So, yeah. So that that was back then when we had like AUL Messenger started popping up. And boy, I don't know if you've ever seen it. You probably got. You guys probably didn't, but. With Messenger, there was something called IRC. Um, it was called Internet Relay Chat. And people would actually, yeah, they would, that they could exchange files. And that that was wild. That was wild back then, too. Um, so that progressed to MySpace. Actually, the first one that I saw was something called Friendster. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Nobody had that though, really. Yeah, that's the first one I saw, but I didn't have. Yeah, I didn't have yeah, it either, but I saw it too. Yeah, and then it was so basic. Friend, yeah, um, MySpace, though, mine was, mine was golden. It was blinged out. It had <laughs> all this HTML on it. It had all these images. Um, it had it had a whole bunch of songs. It had a playlist. People would just visit my site to check out check out all the shit I had on it. Yeah, no, my shit was live. How many top friends did you have? I kept it at eight. 
I know you could do more, right? You could do what? You could do 16? Well, you could do you could do two. I mean, I think you could do less, or I think it ended up at 16 or something at, at one point. I thought it was eight. I thought it was like your eight. I thought it was like kind of more. For sure, eight was the most like better. common. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you ever like have whomever you're seeing at the time on your top list? Of course. What yeah, about you, sure? You did. I, I tried to pick up girls on MySpace, and it, sometimes it worked actually. So, oh, you did? You know, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Um, it was like I worked in a mall, so I could find people that I knew that either worked in the mall or whatever, regulars or whatever. So then before I actually like had my opening lines, I could kind of creep their MySpace and see what was up and uh, get a assess the situation before I like went in. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, dude, it's funny that you mentioned that though. I, I legit met mall girls on, uh, on MySpace. Um, there was, a uh, mall here named the Stonestown Galleria, and I worked there. And uh, I would meet some girls on MySpace, and I found out they worked there. And then like, we would like meet up, um, for lunch or whatever when we were there. Um, they loved they loved my MySpace, and they tried to use me to try to bling theirs up because I knew HTML. Yeah, yeah, but. My, MySpace actually hella helped out people learn how to like write computer language. <laughs> not me. Because, yeah. yeah. No, would, <laughs> yeah, not sure. Yeah, no, no, not sure. But um, I got to give it to MySpace for that. But did you, you know what? I loved it. I'm not even going to lie, dude. I, I had a great time on MySpace. Like, I really enjoyed myself. Um, but then came Facebook. That was. <laughs> I was strong armed into Facebook. Oh, I didn't want to. What, what's the opposite of strong armed? Like flimsy, uh, just dancing, jelly in. armed. Like I was like in at the beginning as soon as I could because some girl told me to go on there and I was just like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, isn't it always about a girl? Mm. Oh man. Uh, what about you, Amanda? Um, you know, I, I definitely went from the, the MySpace to Facebook thing. I actually, not that long ago, a couple of years ago, tried to find my old MySpace because of how many pictures were there that I wish I could get back, but you it's gone. What about it? That's sad. Um, you know where I kept my pictures, which is strange, is on the Costco website because. <laughs> what? <laughs> I would print them out. You know, you download them and then you print them out. And wow. so I would just download them all on there, but only print a few out just as like a free store. And then one day they're like, your picture's gone. And I was like, ah, oh, well, at least they're on MySpace. Nah, MySpace is gone. In fact, I even tried, maybe you guys were in on this, like maybe five or six years ago to try to log back in and bring it back. We were just like, you know, being silly when um, kick was taking a dump, but yeah. I did. But by then it was really changed. Almost yeah. Sure Didn't Justin Timberlake buy MySpace? Is, isn't that a thing that happened? Who did? Justin Timberlake. Didn't he buy it? Did he? I didn't hear I that. Am I, am I wrong? Am I nuts? I thought I, that's, it's, I thought, I thought he did like somewhat, not recently, but somewhat recently, but I could be wrong. I don't know. Never heard of it. I anyway, so Facebook, yeah. Yeah, so long, so long in there. Uh, my cousin, um, the same one that eventually made me go to Twitter, dude, he forced me to go on Facebook, right? He was like, he was like you got to get on here. Everybody's on there. And I liked my MySpace so much. And you were like, no, MySpace is over with. Just you got mm -hmm. to go to Facebook. What um, year? What year did you join Facebook? Boy. Um Dan, to maybe what is it it popped off or around when I went 2008, 2007, something like that? When did it pop off? I, I was on before that. I think I was on like 05 or something. Like, yeah, I got on 06. I was like very much near the beginning. 
Okay. Um, prob probably probably oh seven oh eight maybe. Um, so what? So my my cousin came over, and um, he was, I was like, fine, I'll get on MySpace, but like I need a dope picture because like I liked I shit to look hella nice. That's why I really loved MySpace. Right. So, um, I was like, I, we, so I was like, I got to make this right. And then we heard, see, in California, they have, um, they have like, uh, Latino dudes, like Mexican dudes uh, walking out with ice cream carts and they sell, uh, popsicles and stuff and ice cream. And, um, one was walking by my house and I was like, I got it. So I went outside, I bought, ice cream and stuff, but I gave the guy 20 bucks if he would let me take a picture with his cart. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I took a picture with, I gave him 20 bucks and he was like, yep. Well, actually, I'd rather see. And um, he uh, let me write it and then like I would I would push the card and do like wheelie or whatever with it and just um, that was my first profile pic, me pushing that one card. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was great. It was great. So, um, so I think back at the at the early Facebook days, you couldn't post pictures, right? It was just up like it would very, say, yeah. It you just said it would like give you this the sentence starter. It would yeah. be like, right now I am, and then yeah. you'd like finish it or whatever. That was the early way back then. Yeah, they, like it was so different at the beginning too. Like it, it was almost like there was like a wild west era of Facebook too. Yeah. Like kind of anything goes. And then they just, it was like a college thing, right? Didn't it yeah, start as yeah. like a college it started, thing? It started with colleges and then they opened it up. So. Yeah. That's I, admit, crazy. Though, I, I admit, I really enjoyed their early early stages of Facebook. I mean, my buddies were on there. Um, my friends from high school I hadn't seen, they were on there. Um, you know how it is with high school friends. And it's just like, all of a sudden they disappear. Well, it was like that for me. Um, they were on there and then we would, uh, dude, it would, it would be like time hadn't passed. And I, I enjoyed myself on Facebook a lot. Um, Although I didn't really meet international people on Facebook. So I you know. I've had a, an opposite experience with my high school friends where I feel like, especially there was like this kind of heyday where everyone was adding so many people and people were joining and everyone was connecting. It's like, wow, I haven't, I haven't seen this person in 15 years and everyone's adding each other. But then like, we never talk. So I like I have people on my Facebook that you know I went to public school with or went to high school with or was buddies with in college that I fucking never talked to them at all. So it's like there was just <laughs> this glory days of everyone adding each other and then it's mm -hmm. like okay now what? <laughs> like we don't really have a connection though, you know? I don't know. It wasn't uh we like especially especially my high school friends never talked to them. Yeah. Oh, I don't know yeah. if you guys have this same thing, but I have at least, I'd say 20 to 30 people on my Facebook that interact with me as what, like, you know, they'll like, like your stuff or say happy birthday or whatever. See them in person. You pretend you don't know each other. Yeah. So yeah. one of what I hope, you know, if this podcast becomes huge and famous and I, and everybody ends up finding out about this, then that's okay. But the one, there is one person that I have that situation with who just got hired to be my next boss. Oh, wow. And I was like, well, we're going to have to talk to each other now. Like, it's not going to just be about Facebook happy birthday, you know? So far, <laughs> so far we're averaging under 20 uh, listeners. So I think you're going to be. Okay. She, she might jump on there. If she does, it's okay. I, she's doing it too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> um, I grew out of Facebook kind of fast. I think I, I, I was, I was on top of it for a few years though. Um, what made me jump out of Facebook was Twitter. 
Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Same. Twitter. Twitter. Absolutely. Dude, it, Twitter was gangbusters. Okay. It yeah. had all these new people I hadn't met over the all over the world from everywhere. And everyone was making everybody laugh. Mm -hmm. um, when it was back then, they were all new jokes because you know it, everything's been done now. But yeah, everything was new. So, dude, we had a blast. Um, initially, though, um, my cousin got me, and they're the same cousin that got got me into Facebook. Told me about Twitter in '09, and um, he's like, "Dude, you got you got to get in there." And he he had. He had uh, added some sort of a famous actor, and she was she replied. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, "Oh, that's a thing," you know. Um, yeah, so I, had I, I had a conversation with a hockey player, similar situation. Like when I was like really new to Twitter, but it's like holy fuck, these people like you can actually communicate, and they'll talk back to you. It was just a, a mind blowing experience. I love Twitter for that. Yeah. Go ahead, Amanda. Yeah. Well, I think that why we love Twitter so much is that, you know, Facebook grouped you by geography and like what, you know, the people that you're forced to know and Twitter grouped you by stuff you enjoyed and loved and liked and people like you. And it didn't matter where they lived and it didn't matter if you were related to them or if you were going to ever like sit and have lunch with them. Like you got to meet people that were like, just like you deep inside and you know the dark humor that we all connected on it was like oh there's God. really that many people out there that love this kind of dark humor and not just did we all enjoy the same kind of humor but we became friends over it so it was like how could you have any better friend than that you know no, when they were all like friends that you would actually want to hang out with for sure mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you actually wanted to hang out with these people and um we eventually ended up having we did have, yeah. meetups yeah which Sh shirk is highly familiar with i'd say <laughs> i'd call him a pioneer a trailblazer even <laughs> I, I call I him was, shirk appleseed i was definitely active in the tweet up uh S uh, sphere, dude. Okay, so yeah, but Kick had to come along with it because remember we didn't have DMs yet. So, right. so in order okay. to have that like relationship right. beyond the humor and the things that we liked, we had to have that place where we could also be buddies. And I don't know if you remember, but at one time there could only be ten people in there, so yeah. I felt like. Kick through you right back to fi to to MySpace. <laughs> like, remember, we'd have to kick people out because we wanted to let somebody in, and yeah, and you'd that have silly like kind of stuff. These super groups, yeah, like yeah, it was like exclusive. For <laughs> you sure. got group of, you were I like, remember oh, like man, going you know. indies, and everybody had like <laughs> tons of followers. You know, mm -hmm. they were like these big accounts. Like, I hate to say it though, but we were. We didn't know we were, but we were big accounts, I think. Uh, you know, we didn't consider ourselves whatever. that. We didn't, we didn't, I, but for that time, we were now, no way, of course. Yeah, things are way out of control now, but like, this is we like, were uh, enough what role to, this is like, um, uh, the dude from Married with Children talking about how great he was in high school. High school? Yeah. For them. Hey, no, no, no. It was a great time. It was, I know. It was, it was a, a great, great time. time. And I it didn't was. actually ever think it was gonna end. I thought, you know, oh, this is the way the world is going. Like we're this is how it's gonna be. <clears throat> okay, so why did it change? Well, we'll get to that in a moment, but I will say that uh mine got mine got so popular that I arranged a tweet up in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And people flew in to go to this tweet up. Um, I had uh, I had uh, Virginia, Arizona, Washington D.C., Pennsylvania, 
um, Texas, um, a lot from California because we were in California. Um, sure couldn't be bothered. <laughs> yeah, because I went to four tweet ups like before that in the last six months or whatever. Come on, man. San Francisco I, was a, and I think that I think that's still when I had a job where I couldn't just fuck off whenever I wanted to. So. Sorry. No, but a lot, a lot of people came here. A lot of people came to that one, and uh, we had a blast. We spent hundreds. I mean, th maybe thousand, maybe a uh, over a thousand or something that in drinks. Um, no, it was a lot. It was a lot, dude. Because I, I had, I arranged uh, a special uh, area. I mean, uh, of the that bar uh, we were at. So we, dude, we rocked it pretty hard. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, our former podcast mate and friend Schwebby uh, came with his wife. Mm -hmm. that, pardon me, that she had for a few months. A lovely Canadian lady. Yeah. Um, yeah, she, he was at the only tweet up I went to. That was that, in Vegas. To the he came to the tweet up here, I think. Yeah. So okay. people people did come and I guess we're going to the point where what happened and it's the beginning of the end was 2016. That that mm. presidential election that really just that that turned it's that's when the everything started turning political. Yeah. And it it did hasn't recovered yeah. and the, the really the magic was gone. Um that I started to slowly drift away and slowly but surely my follower kind of dropped and I wouldn't tweet that much anymore. And then eventually I just took a year off altogether. Like didn't even bother. Yeah. But there was also a change in a lot of people, like people that there were people that we would just joke around with and never talk about that kind of stuff. But then when all that happened, you saw kind of their true feelings, you know, like there are people that I used to be friends with that I'm like, Holy fuck. Like you're a little bit off the rails now or, or whenever that changed. Right. So. Yeah. So he's now right. It was that, 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 yeah. that caused yeah. it. Been, yeah. Because you yeah. don't get that when you're out here in the real world. You're just, you know, you're just people, dude, and you're laughing and having fun, and you don't. That just, it's not a thing. But Maybe you don't think you don't done. think you've seen that in people that you know in real life. You don't think that you've seen a change, dude. Like, no, okay, like, you know, let, let me give you a real life example. My mom, my mom, the other day is. Like I'm having dinner with her and she's telling me about how this guy she works with, who's a, a Trump fan, uh, listens to all these podcasts and is telling her all these stories about how harp is controlling the weather. <laughs> and like, like what kind of what kind of harp? You know, harp, you know, Alaska, oh. whatever. So uh <laughs> so and my mom's like <laughs> I'm like, Mom, no, 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 you just just don't worry about him. Just 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 do your own thing. But I mean, like these are people in real life that like yeah, that guy was like, like 10 years ago, five years ago, that or whatever, 2015, that guy was just a, a professional golfer. Like he wasn't a, mm. he wasn't a hardcore listening to podcasts. All so it has changed in real life too. It can seep into reality. I've seen it. I've seen it seep into reality sometimes. Yeah. But we changed too, because you know, like, just like Shirk was saying, like, my dad made this joke. Uh, I went and hung out with him, like, the day, like, two weekends ago. And I was like, mm -hmm. so what do you want to do this weekend? And he's like, well, it's Cinco de Mayo. Let's go shoot some Mexicans. And I was like, oh, I love this. Did, did someone just, can someone see my text messages? Like, am I going to jail right now? And there was, you know, before... T five, ten years ago, I would have been like, "Dad, come on, you know, whatever." And it's old school humor. I mean, I'm I'm Latino, so you know, I mean, I don't, you know, like that's just funny to me. Like, that's <laughs> right. But he he ma he still makes those jokes all the time, and so I always think like it's not just you know we we've all we've all become a lot more sensitive to everything. 
Yeah. And you're now on, it's like, come on. <laughs> like if, if you're constantly on social media and you follow what's going on there, it starts to seep into you and condition you to react a certain way. I'm not on it though. So like I'm hella chill. Like I'm so chill about everything. It just, it doesn't, I don't live in that bizarro world where everything is an extremist view. No, yeah, I'm, that's yeah. just not me. Which it's like just like my friends in real life. Like we're hell, we're so cool. Like, and we can talk about any subject we want, but it's never, it's never like how it gets out of control on social media. But yeah, that's well, what yeah, I, I I feel like that's a, a big difference. Is like people talk differently when they're typing as opposed For to sure. if you're sitting in a bar having mm -hmm. a conversation with someone. Like you're not going to say and use the same words that when you're behind a keyboard. Like it, it that absolutely is a big change that has happened with society. People like this keyboard warrior thing or whatever, right? But like yeah, like mm -hmm. like <clears throat> reply people that are replying to tweets and telling people, you know, they, this or that, like it's come like shit. You would never say to somebody in person or, you know, or you get punched <laughs> like, right. So that's one people way like to release much. your stress offline. Hmm. Pardon me. People like to release their stress offline. Yeah. So if something's bothering them in real life, they might make it and send you every comment and watch what happens. And because it's online, it's not real. And they're out there enjoying it. And that's kind of like how they get their kicks. That's just not me. I don't know. Mm -mm. Doesn't exist for me. Like I, I like to live in the real world. I don't like the bizarre world that is social media. <laughs> I don't live. I like it both. I like it both. <laughs> I'm not gonna. No, no, no. Yeah, you. No, you. You live for I, that. Like, I don't live for it. I do. You you get, it. Head into there, like head first. <laughs> like, like uh, commando Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando, like putting on the the face, yeah, yeah. getting ready to go into battle. <laughs> <laughs> when that knife in yeah. and, and all said, you know, um, yeah, no, not not me, dude. I'm. Like I know what the real life is like. It's like it's chill. Everyone's smiling, having fun, and we. I like. I prefer that. I yeah, don't. I, I do too. I, do I don't. Too. I'm not. I'm. The when you look down my timeline on Twitter, it's it's just all jokes and fun and animals and I enjoy my experience on Twitter, um, even though it gets harder and harder to stay away from all that stuff because it's everywhere. Right. Yeah. It um, is. In my opinion, Twitter's been taken over by edge lords, and it's heartbreaking. We got to see it in the golden age when it, when everything was so cool, right? And it's just you know those days are gone now. Yeah, uh, it's mostly jokes. So, yeah, we're on Twitter, and now uh, social media is a thing, and phones started having internet on it iphone came out and you could watch videos you could watch youtube while you're at work or while you're at your lunch break and then i think the iphone is what really made texting mainstream because it was beautiful it was beautiful to look at it was really nice to look at uh, these beautiful bubbles, the big letters. It was convenient to text. And that's when I noticed my phone calls dip. They started to change from phone calls to text. And it's never recovered. It's never recovered. I, I prefer talking, but everyone loves text. It's convenient. You know, you just want to yeah. say something real quick. There you go. It's true. All in all, and just talking about communication in general from back in the 90s until now is like, I think one of the biggest things that's changed is that everything is so immediate. You, you, have, a, you have a response and it's immediate. So someone texts you, you immediately give them a response. Hey, what are you doing Saturday? Here's my response. You know, and, and before it was like, you maybe said to someone, hey, I want to do something this weekend. Like, let me know what you think. Or I heard that this happened. 
And then you took time to like digest information before a response. Yes. Nobody does that anymore. Nobody. No. You, you give an immediate response to every single thing you do. And we know as humans, that's not a good idea. That's why it's horrible that they interview the coach and the quarterback directly after a game, right? They always go back and be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that, like whatever. I should have cooled down. But nobody cools down at all. You give an immediate response to every single thing, email, text, every single thing. And so we all are just like abrasive at all times instead of that whole like, well, let me just think about it. Yeah, I think I think one thing that is big time changed is with texting versus talking to like speaking in person is texting like you doesn't always the come across the emotion or the the tone and words don't really give you the feeling like it's very easy to misinterpret what somebody is saying um you know whether somebody being sarcastic or whether somebody is being um misinterpreted as being dramatic or whatever like it's so easy over text to misinterpret how someone is feeling if the words aren't perfectly written whereas like if you're talking in person with someone you can hear their voice and the way they're talking and and if they're sad or they're upset or they're happy whatever and you that does not come across in text and I think that it causes a lot of communication problems with friends, with relationships, with parents, with everything. And I think that like, it's almost become normalized now. So. Yeah. Preach son, preach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no more small talk either. I mean, if you think about it, like before, if you were gonna invite, like let's say you're gonna invite somebody to do something with you, you call them and you'd be like, hey, what are you doing? How's your mom? How's your kids? Mm -hmm whatever, whatever. Hey, what are you doing this weekend? You had all of that. Now you text them movies Saturday, question mark. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I don't really care about your life. What's going on? You know, it's like, yeah. there's no more of that. Like, yeah, it's soft stuff. Business, mm -hmm. Right. Business. Business. Yeah. business. yeah, for sure. Yeah, the human experience is almost like robotic in a way. Mm hmm. Yeah. It is. Um, that miscommunication is a big deal. And it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Kid it right on the money. That's exactly uh, what's going on. And it really leads to a lot of friction, um, which is why I prefer talking to the phone and, and being in person. I hate texting for long periods of time anyways. So I don't think I've ever enjoyed that. Um, I have some friends that don't even like they hate not texting it's too inconvenient for them to not text um could they have right, like, a, a job yeah we've you know, set they, our lives up to not talk on the phone that's what yeah. we've done yeah yeah but when we I mean, yeah. together, it's it's, a, it's wild you know when i had my 20 year reunion and i with my high school friends mm -hmm. um 28 did you say 28? 20, 20, 20 year. Oh, 20 year. Okay. 20 year. Um, we didn't really talk much on Facebook anymore. We hadn't, you know, but we did communicate through Facebook that there was a 20 year reunion. And when we met, it was like we never stopped hanging out. It was like, <laughs> We were still kids in high school, except we could drink alcohol and didn't mm -hmm. have to worry about it because we had, there was a baby. Everyone had a babysitter, babysitter now for, <laughs> for their kids. And we had the time of our lives and I've never felt that way before. It was lots of fun. Um, almost, it's, it was almost like we were transported back into our high school and we, we were we were acting the same we were talking the same we were in some cases making the same jokes it was dude we had a, the biggest blast i don't know if you guys ever went to your high school reunion or not did you yeah yeah my, i plan mine that i'm i'm that girl that's oh, in charge of wow. mine. wow so how did that go 
Uh, my 10 year was super successful. The 20 year was a little less. And then we didn't have 25 because of COVID. But, you know. What, what constitutes a successful high school reunion? Like, like you know, 100 people or whatever. Uh, just turnout. Yeah, just people. Uh, you know, we could pay for the building that I, I rented. Yeah. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Dirk? What? What about you? I've never done it. So, no. <laughs> Never been to a high school reunion. Never really had a lot of interest, but I'm sure that they have occurred. And I don't know if uh, my invite just got lost in the mail or what happened, but uh, uh, I've never done it. But what am I going to do? Like, like I said, I don't really keep in touch with these people. So I guess I feel like, you know, I see the, the ones that I, the people that I was close to, with in high school i see their lives on facebook i see what's happening so then i guess i'm just gonna hang out with them and talk about the same shit that i see online or whatever like i don't know i don't, I don't really know how it would go that's a shame kind of a, kind of a strange experience for me some people but, but, don't yeah, some people don't care about yeah. that stuff it isn't like yeah. these in whatever yeah uh, when I heard I was I was juiced, I was excited. Like <laughs> I loved my high school friend. Like my no, I love these guys. And every once in a while when I do log on to Facebook, I like make fun of one of my super old school friends yeah. um named Jeff and be like, Does anyone know if Jeff changed his phone number? I sent him a text and uh, he hasn't replied and it's already been ten or fifteen years. <laughs> So, that's funny yeah, I love that guy. And, and he's a he's, he, it's funny more because if you know Jeff he's like one of the best people he's a teacher he has like four kids he like just seeing him makes you smile he's like the nicest guy but he doesn't communicate so Those I'm not that, not that I'm very good, good people. yeah yeah so I hear so I hear um <laughs> Uh, so Rolo, I, I don't know how much experience you have with this and I have very little, but I think Shirk has more. I think where, um, technology has ruined communication is dating. I think dating oh, apps have wow. ruined people. Absolutely yeah, ruined people. That's a large part of communication. We didn't even get into. That's, that's a good. I'm sorry, but it, it, I do. I think it's ruined people. Yeah. People um, don't have. Real, com real relationships anymore. No, yeah, it's true. True. Uh, so you think you, you think you think that just because people don't really meet in real life anymore, or like, how do you feel? Like, how do you think it's ruined it? I think that dating apps have given people permission to dismiss and throw people away so easily. No matter what, you know, you can talk to someone for. 10 12 days and all of a sudden you're just all what well, they blocked me like what we're like everything was great you what know did you do amanda tell us what you did no, no, no. I, I like i literally didn't jump into the to that kind of stuff for very long because i i'm too sensitive and i'm like what is happening you know i just think that you know but i have friends that are single or a lot of people that i know that are in my daughter you know she's got she's in the the dating app world mm -hmm. And I just think it has, I wanted to believe that this was going to help people to like weed out the people that they weren't compatible with or whatever. But I just think it's given people permission to be really. Uh, you, think, you think it's changed the way that they treat people? I do. I think that you, that you would never treat someone in person that way. You know, you would never be sitting there talking to somebody and just. Right. Get up and walk away in the middle of a conversation. Yeah, you wouldn't do it. It's or ghost, or how about be sitting in front of 30 people and pretending like they're all the only one you're talking to? You know? Oh yeah. That's well, that's another thing is everyone on a dating app is talking to like a hundred different people. Like how Which do you is actually, crazy. How do you actually build a connection with a specific person when you know like as soon as they stop talking to you, it's gonna be like the next person they're talking to? Yeah. It's yeah. I don't like it. I don't get that uh, experience on Christian Mingle. I don't know what you guys are talking about. 
<laughs> well, you know, you ju jump on farmers only and you will. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I do think that there's a place for it, but I think that you're right. Like people's behavior has become a problem, but I think that in 2023, like people, how do people meet, you know, people don't like, like if you, if you start talking to someone at the grocery store, they think you're a fucking weirdo now. Exactly. Like, like you, like you can't actually the mm -hmm. the ways that the ways that people used to meet are now like oh like is, I'm gonna report this guy he's creepy or whatever like yeah because if you start talking to a stranger you're a creep so right it's like it, almost, that's why so it's I think it's ruined it yep yeah. you do you do you have to or you have to stumble on somebody on accident yeah. it is crazy yeah. right it is crazy but I just feel like it has. It has really been a negative thing for the way people treat each other, you know? But that's probably just another, like, of the overarching theme where people act differently online as they do toward, in, as opposed to how they treat people in person, right? Yeah. Because like, you're, when you're on a dating app and you're, you know, talking shit to someone or whatever, being an asshole, like, you're not saying the stuff that you would say if you were on a date with them in a bar. Ever, yeah, yeah. You know, um, that's, sorry, yeah. Um, I'm even Adam Levine cheats on, on his <laughs> right on his lady. Even Adam on, Levine, even him. You know, even him. Yeah, Tristan yeah, Thompson. Marriage, marriage like that changed marriages. Uh, marriages a lot. Um, I knew this guy who got tired of his lady and started. Um, talking to people about pina coladas, <laughs> and he went to a bar and talked to them about someone who enjoyed pina coladas. And when they met this person, it was actually his wife um, that he was talking to the whole time, and he didn't uh, know his wife liked pina coladas. So you, you know how you asked me to uh, explain yacht rock to you. Well, yes. that 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 is like a top five yacht rock song. <laughs> That's yacht uh, rock. Oh, that is yacht rock. That is like quintessential yacht rock. Like if there's like a top ten list, that song is on there. So if you want to understand it? yacht rock, which we'll discuss someday, then the yeah, pina colada that, that, that song. It's a great introduction to it, and I fucking love that song. Yeah, yeah. Um, I need to know what yacht rock is. You know what Bardcore is now, so you need to explain to me what Yacht Rock is. <laughs> All right. Uh, Amanda. A for another episode, but yes. Yeah. Will. You, you need to look into our previous video about Bardcore music, and you'll become a fan. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm interested, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, looks like we had a good conversation of how communication has evolved in our lifetime. It, it started with just riding bikes, going to a friend's house. Uh, writing notes in class. Um, it went to pay phones. It went to pagers and pay phones. It ended up going to AOL Messenger. We didn't even mention email, but there was chat rooms, uh, the Nokia 3310 brick phone, the Motorola V180 flip phone, MySpace, Facebook, Twitter. I had a Motorola, uh, Motorola Razor. I don't know if you remember those. Oh, um, for sure. The square or um, rectangular sharp edge. Yeah. I was the coolest kid. Everyone, everyone was like, dude, oh wow. Um the, then the iPhone came and then from there, that's where we are today. And it's changed every it's changed a lot. And here's the last question before we finish out the podcast. Where do you see communication going in 10 years? I think it's going to go backwards. What do you think, Shark? You think? It, what do you mean by go backwards? I think it's going to get more. You know, just like every trend does. I think it's going to get cooler to be, you know, paper pencil. Eventually, really? it's you know that's going to be nostalgic, and people are going to enjoy it, and you know the conversations are going to come back. I mean, maybe it's just wishful thinking, but I really do. I think that's what's going to. I think it's going to make a comeback. I think um, I 
Man, I don't know if I was ready for this question, but I think that the like the younger younger people than us uh, have really known no other life. Like they've kind of been born into this online existence, and I think that that's just how they things are. So I don't know if I can see it going backwards. Yeah, I don't know. I just I hope know. it is. You I know? hope you're right. I hope you're right because I I think that there. I think that maybe I don't know if this is just being nostalgic, but I think that maybe in the early to mid two thousands there was a healthy balance of like an an online existence with like real life um, communication with your friends, your family, whatever. And I think I that it all, it all kind of existed perfectly whereas now it's just like way out of whack and right i don't know how we get back to that so i like it there's probably going to be a hybrid to this um people are going to start talking to each other in person and calling each other i think that is just like they brought vinyl back mm -hmm. right they're gonna bring back point. um to uh, and then to they're bring sexy back <laughs> you know what? I, I want to tell you something before we go. I did a, a, a complete classroom lesson with my students because they're not allowed to use cell phones at school. You know, they're only 11 years old, but there's often times they need to call home for something. Yeah. I, I forgot my instrument. You know, I need to tell my mom I got to stay for football, whatever. And I say, call her, call them because I have a classroom phone and they don't know how to use the phone. Wow. They don't know how. You know what they do? They dial the number and then they pick up the phone. <laughs> and I have to say, no, 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 no. You have to pick the phone up. Do you hear that sound? And they just look at me and I say, now dial the phone number. And they're like, usually it's, I don't know their phone number. You know, like I got to, can I go get my cell phone out of my backpack? And so I said, okay, you guys, we're going to have a whole class lesson. And I unplugged it, took it up in front of the class, put it under the little camera. So it would flash up on the wall. I'm like, here's how you use a phone. You might get in a situation where you have to use one of these someday, these old mm -hmm. dinosaurs. I always thought using a phone was intuitive. Like you look at it and you know, but you're no. right. Yeah. Cause you know, a cell phone, you dial the number and then you press call afterwards. When I went to Catholic school, um, they taught us how to use old technology. And the reasoning was because if we were ever in a third world country, yeah. we would need to know what to do and show other people. And they would show us old technology, um, old phones, old equipment. Um, they showed us how to do ditto paper. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They like. Yeah, they made sure you knew how to use it and all that. Um, interesting. Interesting, Amanda. That That's pretty cool of you to do that for every kids. Well. Um, so bringing face-to-face -face back is, I, I see that happening, but I also see what I meant by hybrid is, I think technology is not going to stop advancing. So we're probably going to be seeing something like um holographic images of your friends um which may or may not be them it might even just be avatars that's what i see that could happen uh i, I wouldn't be surprised yeah i mean we're using video chat now but what's the next step from video chat with 3d holograms life in the uh, rollovers <laughs> yeah that's a, I, I think that's reasonable to see happening sooner than later. For sure. Um, because what's the next step, right? You can okay. talk to dead people. Tupac will play at your concert. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, great conversation on communication. I hope uh, you got a lot, lots of nostalgia talking about pagers and AOL Messenger and MySpace and For such. For sure. Um, Interesting to see how things have changed, how it's progressed or even regressed in some ways. Um, hope you enjoyed this uh, stream. Uh, we are at Jen 
Ten Den on YouTube and also at Jen Ten Den on Twitter. You can find me at the Rolo on Twitter. You can find Shirk at the Iron Shirk and Amanda Hug and Kiss at Cali Love Girl 77. Hey, I thank all of you for listening. Any final words, Shirk? Hell no, man. Take us out. Amanda? Call your mom every chance you get. <laughs> Good advice. Wise words. Peace out and ciao. Bye. I have to piss. Holy fuck. <laughs>